there's still a lot of acorns and nuts and stuff. It looks like this thing sat somewhere for a while and squirrels got to it. So I just want to clean everything up and get it, uh, get it easy to work with. After washing the engine off, it's pretty easy to spot any leaks or weeping. And I noticed some uh, weeping of oil from the valve cover gaskets. So I'm going to take these off, replace the gaskets, and uh, paint the valve cover. Some of these bolts were so loose, I could just take them out by hand. These usually take a little bit of coaxing, but don't bend them. Just give them a little pop. That looks really good for being 30 years old. I don't see any signs of uh, serious distress or heat. Even though I wash this off, I'm going to vacuum up any debris that has any chance of uh, getting in that engine. I'm going to want to scrape these down without bending them or warping them in any way and just make sure they're totally clean. You don't want any oil or foreign substances between the gasket and the engine component or the engine itself. I'm also going to paint these so I'll uh, remove all the oil and grease. I'll probably acetone them and then I'll use a wire brush on them as well. Usually I wouldn't care but I'm going to try to preserve these stickers. They've made it this long. I'm going to paint around them. Also save your rubber grommets. There's nothing wrong with them. They can be reused. The valve, as long as it's shaking, that means it's still working. This is nothing but a dirty, rotten, gummy, greasy dirt bucket. We're going to get rid of that and put a breather instead. I started out by soaking the valve covers in a bucket of hot, soapy water and finishing off anything that needed to be with an old sponge. I've heard that putting them in the uh, hot, long cycle of a dishwasher works as well, but my wife would freaking kill me. And it's time to get the angle grinder out again and clean up these surfaces. Once I'm done with the angle grinder and cleaning everything up, I'll wipe it down with acetone. I like acetone because it takes everything off and it dries very quickly. I just want to make sure this is completely oil free. After wiping it off, I tape off what I don't want to be painted and then I can hit it with primer. While the primer is drying, I'll clean off the surface that the gasket is going to be placed up against on the engine. Once the primer is dry, then I'll start putting on a little high heat Mopar blue. Once the valve cover is dry, I'll pre-fit it. I want it to fit perfectly. If there's too much material on the ends, which there usually is, I'll shave it off. I had to trim down both ends of this gasket, and now it uh, drops in there nicely. That's what you want. The perfect Next, fit. Next, I lay in a bead of high temp silicone, RTV, right into the corner of the valve cover, all the way around. Then I'll lay in my gasket. Then I'll gently press the gasket in, and I'll let it lay up for about 15-20 minutes. Now, not to let it dry, just to let it get tacky. I've got the next one ready to go here, and I wanted to quickly mention that these valve covers are in great shape. They're not bent or scored in any way. Uh, the surface on the engine that I'm mating them up to is in great shape as well. But once in a while you'll come across parts that you're trying to put a gasket on that are in bad shape. And don't be afraid to load up on that RTV or that high temp silicone uh, for those parts just to make sure that you get a good seal. I don't need much here. I probably don't even need to put the silicone on these in order for these gaskets to hold. This is just a little reassurance. And again, even one last time before you put these valve covers on, take a rag wet down with acetone and clean up those edges. Acetone evaporates very quickly, which is nice for being able to do your work right afterwards. And carefully slip your valve cover in and lay it into place. You can put a little pressure on it. Then using the same technique I used with the uh, exhaust manifold, starting in the middle and working my way out, I'll just hand tighten everything. Use my torque wrench to get to the nine and a half pounds of torque each one of these studs takes to tighten it down. And don't just tighten down one bolt at a time. Go around spreading this out evenly. Just doing a turn at a time until that torque wrench clicks. Once you're done torquing that down, go ahead and put your caps and hoses back on. I kind of upgraded to chrome here and I 
Got rid of that big, ugly grease can with a nice K&N uh, breather filter. Putting chrome on your engine like this not only helps your engine perform better, but uh, you really get the chicks. You pull into the campground with a 1978 Dodge engine dressed up like this, you're going to get chicks. It'll be easy. Now, theoretically, as soon as the valve covers are torqued down correctly, you should be able to start the vehicle and drive away. However, if you're not in a hurry and you have the time, just let that silicone uh, gasket material lay up and dry completely. I usually let it dry overnight. While we're waiting for that to set up and dry properly, we'll move on to the ignition. The coil is pretty easy. Just take the old one off, bolt the new one in, it's plug and play. The only thing that I did differently was replace the uh, connectors with new ones and I put a dielectric grease on everything. I will not plug in the plug wire to the cap until everything is in. Now replacing the rest of the ignition system isn't hard but it's a little trickier. You want to know where you are at all times. You want to point a reference. Now, it helps to have the manual because that tells me what my firing order is and where the number one plug is. In this case, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's my firing order. Also, if you need to mark any points of reference on your old cap, do so now. This is my number one. That's the one I marked. I marked it over here, so I always know where my number one is. And I'm just going to go kind of in a reverse order and replace everything with my new stuff step by step. I'll coat the spark plug with a high temp anti-seize lubricant and I'll hit the spark plug hole with some uh, spray lubricant. And again using my torque wrench I'll tighten it down to manufacturer specs. Spark plugs can tell you a lot about the health of an engine and these spark plugs are a good indicator that this engine's running well which even makes me feel better about the purchase of it. And that's in spite of the fact that the spark plugs and spark plug wires themselves are looking to be pretty old. These are starting to get so bad that they're turning green and, and turning to dust on top. And all the spark plug wires themselves have uh, cuts in them. In fact, when the truck was running, I could put a screwdriver down here and actually get arc from them. They were leaking so bad. You can figure out when number one cylinder is at the top of its rise by taking the spark plug out, putting your finger over the hole of the spark plug, and then cranking it over in slight increments. When your finger gets blown out of there by the pressure caused by the piston coming to the top, you know so you're in the, the right So with the coil wire off, I turn the key until this is aligned with the number one cylinder plug wire. Then I'll even take a straight edge like this and just mark some you know, object on the engine to line up with that, just so I have a point of reference. This is all just to make sure everything goes smoothly. Then I'll loosen the brace for the rotor itself. Okay, we're all set to take the rotor out. I got the brace off. It is at this point that you do not want to move the engine at all, not even a click. And this is held on just with a little gasket now. So it should lift right out of there. The new cap and rotor are installed and that's my new number one cylinder position. And that's the reason why I want to keep everything in order as best that I can and mark everything the best that I can so I can take everything off in the same order. Less mistakes will happen that way. Okay, everything's hooked up and uh, we're ready to test this out. This truly is the moment of truth. I can only hope to be within a few degrees of timing on this. I always take a moment before I turn the key to say a serious prayer, you know, a small prayer, and find a fully charged fire extinguisher. Hmm. Wow, that was a bit of frustrating work for sure. So that was an incredible waste of time trying to get this on because it just was not going to work. And uh, I guess if I can take any 
silver cloud out of this uh, it's for this video to just show you sometimes you know you can buy a brand new part and uh, you think you're going to you know make easy work out of it and you know two three hours later you're just frustrated so I think what I'm going to do is get you know I'll get online and try to get this returned um, I'm going to get another rotor and uh, cap from somebody else and, and give it a shot this is not an inexpensive item and uh, you know, to say the least, I'm bummed. I'm just bummed for the amount of time that I wasted on it. But I'm glad. I mean, this is obviously running a lot smoother, a lot better. I was leaking a lot of juice out of the, the old lines, and uh, the spark plugs were in bad shape. And having a new uh, hot coil on there helps things as well. So I did make an improvement. Uh, overall, I'm happy, but I'm sure I'll be a lot happier after I've had a beer and put this behind me, and it's going back to wherever I got it from. <laughs> Despite the setback, I'm pretty happy with the progress. I've taken something that looks like this. And now it looks like this. So I think I've already increased the value of the vehicle in less than a week. Just by tightening it up, getting rid of the leaks, uh, improving the performance, cha you know, changing out simple parts to make it run better. Uh, I'm even going to gain some horsepower on this, and I'm going to get better fuel mileage at the same time. Not a lot, but I'm going to get some. So it's all an upward movement. That's what it's all about. It, it still is very satisfying work. So until next time, guys, I'll see you later, and I'll be tackling whatever's next. Camper test drive number one. Yay! Propulsion systems seem to be operating. Yep. Exterior hull. Has a tremendous amount of strength and integrity. Atmospheric controls operating optimally. What do you think? It's awesome. We've got some improvement here. Oh, yeah. How about we pass somebody? Yeah! Look at that. You know we're doing good when we can pass. Yep. Let's go Volkswagen. Beep, beep. Hope you learn to drive someday! Cruise is pretty good at 65. Yeah. Alright. We're on our way. Yeah. Getting better.